Hey guys, it's Jack, and I'm here to talk about this race that you're looking at right now. This is the New Hampshire Motor Speedway Thursday Night Crit Series. Um, it's done on a motor race course, which is super cool. Uh, it's not often you get a chance to even ride your bike on a course like this, but getting to race it is great. Um, so this course, the majority of it, as you can see in the top right, that is the course map. The majority of this course is on the main oval, um, but in the back straight, you can see we make a deviation and we go up two hills and you can see on the bottom of the screen the course profile um, and so those two bumps on the course profile are the two hills that we're going to go over. Uh, we're going to do 18 laps of this course uh, and every three laps there's a point sprint so this is a bit different than your usual training crit. Um, there are points on offer every three laps and the winner of the race is the person that obtains the most number of points uh, total over all of these sprints. And I personally really like this format. It means that the race is exciting for the entire time. Um, and it means you get multiple chances to position before a sprint and, and learn how to do that. And that's what these practice races are all about. Uh, and as, as you can see here, we're off now. This is the first neutral lap. We're just taking it really easy. Um, as you can see, I have my, my power and heart rate and speed in the bars on the left, so you can see how much work I'm doing. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a college student living in New York City. This is my second season riding, uh, riding a bike that is. Um, obviously this season was kind of messed up due to the coronavirus, but I was lucky enough to come out here to New Hampshire to do some of these races that I'm gonna, that I all recorded and will show to you. Um, so now we're on the back straight and soon we're gonna be making a right turn onto the hill in the back section. Um, and this hill is not, both of these hills are not that big, but when you need to do them 18 times, it starts to hurt a lot. And so here we're going around the turn and boom, we're right at the bottom of the hill. Uh, and even on the neutral lap, you can see I still need to do a pretty good amount of work. I'm up to 400 watts. Um, you see 500 watts there. Um, and this adds up over the race. And since this is on the back straight, um, it's somewhere that I need to make sure I'm in good position coming into each sprint. Um, a little bit about the competitors. Uh, I've um, directly in front of me in the blue kit is Jonathan. He is second place in the general classification right now. Um, this race is a series, so he's come to other races and scored points. And then first place in the GC is on the red bike, just ahead up to the left in the Concord Velo kit, the white kit. Um, she's leading the Omnium. She has the most number of points, has scored consistently the best over this series. So those are two people that I need to look out for in this race. Um, and you can see Jillian is in first place and she has two teammates here with her to help. Um, and that's going to matter a lot in this race uh, because she'll be able to get assistance. And me personally, since no one on my team is here with me today, means I need to work around that. So here we are coming up the second hill on the course. Um, and then we're going to descend down into the final chicane into the start finish straight. Um, and this is where a lot of the position is gonna happen coming into each sprint lap. Um, because once we crest this hill, now we're, we're starting to descend. There isn't that much time in between now and the sprint. So positioning is key. Um, another thing too, the wind is coming from um, basically perpendicular across the start finish line coming towards where we are now. So the wind is coming from my left right now with the point of view of the camera, uh, which means that that's gonna play into all the sprints, into my positioning. Right now it doesn't matter because this is a neutral lap. Everyone's just, just coasting along. Um, but I'll show you in some of the next sprints how I use that to my advantage to uh, get some good placings. Uh, I have 
done this course before. This is my second time on the course, so I do know uh, how it races. Um, right now, I am, I believe, fourth place in the GC because I got one uh, win before. I won the last week's race, and I got second place in the week before. So coming into this, uh, I'm looking to get another win or another second place hopefully to try to get more points and move myself up into possibly third or second place on GC. And here we go, we are off now. This is the first uh, lap of the race and I'll bring you back right uh, for the next sprint. Okay, so here we are. This is one lap later than I last showed you. This is going into the first sprint lap, so this is lap three. The first three riders to cross the finish line next are gonna receive points. Um, so now is the time when I need to make sure I stay in position, and both Jillian and Jonathan know that. They're both up here at the front. They wanna make sure that they don't get swarmed before the sprint at the end. And this is when I do more work to maintain my position instead of surfing wheels. Um, and my goal going into the sprint is to have enough people in front of me so I get let out, but not so little people that I end up on the front before the sprint. If it works out perfectly, the first time I come out into the wind needs to be on the finishing straight when I'm opening up my sprint. Uh, and I'll show you how I do that um, as we come up onto the hill. Um, and you'll see here, this hill is, is especially tough. This is gonna be the third time we go up it, but it's especially tough because we have this turn right at the base, which means we lose a lot of our uh, momentum coming into this hill. So we make this turn, and then we're in the base of the hill, and both Jillian and Jonathan are here at the front, uh, keeping their position good, and boom, 800 watts. We are really, really moving up this hill, and I wanna make sure people don't pass me, but I keep a good number of people in front of me. So I let this New England Devo rider come in front of me, um, because I don't wanna be too close to the front. We're still uh, not even halfway through the lap at this point, and we're gonna make the descent into this bank turn. Um, so Jillian is right next to me. She's leading the GC. She's very strong. Um, and then in front, on the very front, is Jonathan and then these two other riders here. Um, so I pull out to the right on this turn to let a couple more people in front because it seemed like they were going to lose gas and stop pulling. But it now it seems okay, so I, I move further up because I see people have come on the inside of the turn and I don't want to get swarmed. I, want, I don't want to get boxed out before the sprint. And now I feel like I'm in a pretty good position. There are about six or seven riders in front of me and we're coming into the descent. So right now we've just crested the hill and we're descending. Um, it's not very much longer till the sprint, but I have enough people in front of me. So hopefully I'll stay in the wind, uh, stay in the draft, staying efficient all the way to the line. Um, and I come in deeper on the corner than this New England Devo rider and I come up behind this guy in the green uh, bibs. And uh, like I said before, the wind is kind of coming from the left. So I stay a bit to the right of this green guy's wheel until we turn. And right at this point, I'm right behind him. And then I move in uh, underneath him. So the wind is coming from our right now. And now Jonathan in the blue is on the front, but he's on the front too early. He doesn't want to lead anyone out. So, and he knows that. So he keeps the pace up and he moves all the way over to the left, but leaves a little gap open. And I squeeze in and open up my sprint on the, on the sheltered side. And in this first sprint, I take the first place. Okay, so this is three laps later. This is the next point sprint. So this is lap six of the race. Um, here, again, the next three people to cross the line are gonna get points. And it's my goal to do basically the same thing that I did uh, last points lap, that was to 
only coming to the wind right at the end when I can sprint. Um, but we'll see, it's not gonna work out e exactly the way I want. Uh, we are really, really moving up this hill, 500, 600 watts. Um, this is a lot of work. People are, are really working, and you can see some people in the field behind us are starting to drop off. Um, again, right ahead of me is Jillian, uh, probably the strongest rider in the race, so I know I'm in, in a good spot. And here, it seems perfect. I have four riders in front of me, um, which is just enough so that I'm not too far back and it's not too much of a job to sprint around them to win, but it's also not too close to the front that I'm gonna end up on the front. Um, uh, Jonathan again is on the front. He was the guy in the blue who led out the last sprint. But this lead out is not gonna go as smoothly as last one. Um, if you can see on the left, uh, this guy comes in on my left underneath me in the corner and pushes me out to the right into the wind. And then Jillian starts to open up her sprint and I need to start sprinting now because people are coming up on my left and right. I don't want to get swarmed and then boxed in. So I sprint, I'm following Jillian's wheel. She stops a bit, I stop a bit, but then I continue my sprint and this gap opens up. These two riders move to the left and right and leave the open for me and I'm able to come across the line first. Okay, so this is sprint number three. This is, again, three laps later. Um, and right away, Jillian is off the front. This New England Devo guy has lost the wheel. I need to come around and close this because right in front of Jillian is her teammate. Uh, they're both on Concord Velo and I know that he's gonna lead out for her. Um, so I need to close this down uh, and I do that. And something special about this lap is the middle points lap is worth double. So one win on this points lap is equal to two wins on a regular points lap, which means that this one is more highly contested. Uh, and here, according to my logic from uh, my other laps, this is too close to the front. I'm only third wheel. But in this case, it's okay because Jillian is being let out. Her, I know her teammate is gonna go all the way to the line. So it's okay to be a bit closer to the front. Uh, and here we're starting the descent, uh, getting ready to stay in good position with the wind on the chicane uh, and contest the middle sprint. This, this sprint is very important because if you just win uh, the middle sprint and the last sprint, you could uh, tie with someone who wins every other sprint. It's important, they're worth a lot of points. Um, so we're going really quick. Jillian's uh, lead out man is doing a really good job keeping the pace high. That's the point. It's to stop people from attacking at this point, but I'm all too happy to sit in the wheels and wait for the sprint. Um, the guy in the black on the left, he comes along the inside again, but I'm not getting swarmed this time, so I'm, I'm in no rush to open up the sprint. The power's going up and we're going faster, but I wait until now to open up the sprint. The lead out man is still going and I go on the left, which is the sheltered side, but on the right Craig of State Bicycles comes out and absolutely towels the sprint. He didn't contest any of the other sprints, so he was fresh for this one. And that's very important in these races. Okay, so now it's right after the sprint and Jonathan goes on my right, followed by Jillian. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have gotten right on this, but in my defense, I was tired. I'm, my heart rate is still at 182 beats per minute. I, I don't want to chase this. And from how this course races, breakaways usually don't work. So I put a little bit of a dig in here, but not that much. Um, and I, I start to fall back, um, see my power drops and I pull off to the side. Um, I'm tired, I don't want to need to pull this brake back. The entire field is on my uh, on my wheel. I don't want to bring them up for free. So I go into this um, lap expecting them to be brought back pretty soon. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to work out like that and we'll get into that. So this shows a little bit of what I would usually do uh, in between sprint laps. I, I fall back. Uh, further back in the group. Um, since the sprint lap isn't coming up, it's more time for me to focus on staying efficient. 
and recovering for the next sprint. So positioning doesn't matter as much. I, I let more people pass me on my left. You can see basically the whole field is moving a bit quicker up this hill and that means I can use uh, less energy. Um, since I had just sprinted at the uh, end of the last lap, so I'm tired and I want to start to recover. Uh, I'm letting a lot more riders pass me than usual, um, just because I wanted to go up the hill a little bit slower and save some more energy. Um, but I make sure I stay in the wheel, so I'm getting a draft and uh, staying with the field, obviously. I don't want to get dropped. Um, and we're coming around this turn, and you can just see Jillian and Jonathan out front. They're so close. Um, and it's at this point that I expect the field to catch them or to come much closer to them, but, but they don't. And the field stalls here. And that's because right on the front right now is one of two of Jillian's teammates, two of the Concord Velo teammates. And they have no obligation to chase down uh, their own teammate in the break. So they sit on the front setting false tempo um, to discourage people from chasing and to allow Jillian in the breakaway to get some more time. And during this time as well, uh, one other guy bridges up to Jillian and Jonathan. I don't realize this at the time, but that's what's happening uh, right now. And so coming back down into the main oval, I'm pretty far back in the group. Uh, I think almost near the back but I'm just trying to, to stay, uh, stay efficient, stay in the wheels, stay on the sheltered side uh, and make sure I'm not doing, I'm doing as little work as possible essentially, um, since I wanna make sure I'm fully ready for the next sprint. But as we come into the straight, Jillian and Jonathan are nowhere to be seen. And it's at this point when I start to get a little bit worried about the group catching them. And for me, since I'm fourth in the general classification, uh, Jonathan is second and Jillian is first. So for, for me to do better than them, for me to beat them, I need to get more points to them. And when they are up in a breakaway ahead, they're going to be getting more points while I'm getting none. And now we are heading into a points lap and they still haven't been brought back. It's been a whole lap that they've been off the front. Um, and at this point I decide um, that I'm going to try to chase them down. And But I'm not going to do it here in the flat section. I'm going to wait until we get into the hilly section of the course because I don't want to just sit at the front and bring everyone with me. I want to attack so that I go across the gap myself. Um, and not bring anyone else with me. Um, preferably, uh, I would want to get up to the breakaway um, with no one else with me so that I can get the benefits of being in the breakaway off the front. Um, so I start to move up here a bit earlier than I usually would. You can see the, the Concord Velo teammates on the front um, deliberately blocking a bit, keeping the, the field's pace low. So I start moving up on the right, which is the sheltered side, and I want to take a good line into this corner so that I can put in a dig up this hill and get across to Jillian and Jonathan. And I'm going to do that in just a bit. So I get a little chopped here by the guy right in front of me in the striped, and I need to come around him. but. Here I follow this group of riders. Here's one of uh, Jillian's teammates on the right. Um, he's going backwards. And I follow these wheels and I'm gonna put in a dig on the next hill to get across. Uh, in preparation for this, I move out to the outside because I want to take the corner in the most efficient line possible. So I come out to the right of the guy in the blue and then I come in uh, to hit the apex of the corner to take the most efficient line and then right here I put in my dig and start to move away from the field. Um, uh, I put in the dig here because it's on the hill and it means if someone wants to follow me they need to be doing um, equivalent power or more power if they're heavier. Um, 
and I don't want to bring anyone with me. And I bridge up to this uh, New England development guy who had attacked previously and, and yell at him to get on my wheel. You can't hear that in the video, but preferably it would be easier to bridge if I had someone with me. Um, but he, uh, I, I drop him off my wheel. I don't have a rear camera. Um, so you can't see that, but now I'm off the front of the group chasing Jillian and Jonathan and I want to get across the gap as quick as possible. There's a points lap coming, not this lap, but the next lap. So I would like to be able to contest for some points um, while Jillian and Jonathan are taking the first and second spot. So I, I sit at around uh, my threshold pace. 320-ish um, watts, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, I keep moving, I stay. Uh, when I'm by myself like this, I can take the most ideal lines around the corners. Um, and I get onto the start-finish straight and I'm, I'm by myself. It's, it's very hard to see, but uh, Jillian and Jonathan are up there ahead of me. They're not super, super far ahead. And it's, they are so close, it's tantalizingly close for a whole lap. Um, and it's just such a struggle chasing down brakes like this because they seem so close, but it's a lot of work. I'm doing a lot of power to do this. I'm at 185 beats per minute. That's a lot of work. Um, uh, I keep the power down. I, I want to keep my speed up. Uh, and I would like to catch them before the hill um, because then I can get into the draft and then I can be more efficient. But. Uh, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. You can you can actually see them just ahead. They're just making the turn right now onto the straight. They just went around the turn right now. Um, and right now in this position, I have a lot to gain because if I can make it to the breakaway, then I only need to contest with a limited number of people for the sprints. But I'm also vulnerable now too because um, both Jillian and Jonathan off the front can split the work 50-50. Um, but since I'm by myself, I need to do 100% of the work. When I'm by myself uh, in between the two groups, it's, it's very easy to burn, uh, burn yourself out. And I didn't make the catch before the hill, so I'm gonna need to try to put in a really, really strong dig up this hill. I'm really hurting now. I'm already at 186 beats per minute. This dig is hurting so much. I'm going to go uh, up to way up into my anaerobic heart rate, look 190 beats per minute now, um, because I want to make the catch. I need to dig deep and make it across. Um, and they, they're just so close. They've just gone down the hill now. It's hard to see, but um, they're making the turn. And it, when you're chasing a break like this, it feels like you're not making up any ground, even though you're working so hard. 191 beats per minute. That's, I'm really, really hurting right now. Um, and you can see there's three of them together uh, with the extra guy that bridged up to them. But I wanna make the catch uh, as soon as possible. And that means going above my threshold. Um, luckily, uh, pretty soon, uh, someone else from the field is going to bridge up to me uh, right here this guy in the orange he attacks from the field and bridges across to me and is now going to help me get across we're going to help each other and I'm like this is super lucky I'm not sure I would have been able to make it across uh, unless this guy had come across um, to help so now I can sit on his wheel as he's trying to bridge um, and I'm finally able to get some rest. I'm still hurting, still 191 beats per minute, um, but now at least I don't need to be doing all the work and we can help each other uh, catch Jillian Jonathan and the other guy in the breakaway. Um, this guy in the orange is, is really, really strong. Um, he's got a lot of power, so I'm happy that he's here to help me across the break, but I, I also know that once we're in the break, uh, I'm going to need to fight it out with him for the sprints. Um, but that being said, that's still better than being in the field with everyone. Um, and pretty soon we're getting much closer. This guy's going really, really quick. Um, it's taking me a lot of power just to stay on his wheel. And by the end of this uh, finish start, we are going to make the catch. Um, he doesn't. Uh, flick me through to take a pull. I'm not exactly sure why 
Um, he just pulled me all the way across, which is was a bit of an error um, since he let me get almost a free ride all the way there. Uh, and see, now just ahead of him, we've now made contact with the brake and we are up there. So it's me, this guy in the orange who's really strong, there's a guy in black, and then there's Jillian and Jonathan. And again, Jillian is leading GC and Jonathan is um, second place. So I'm in good company. These are the people that I need to be fighting it out for the sprint with. Um, and in this group, it is, even though it's all strong riders, it's still uh, better than being in the field. It, the odds have been lowered. Um, there's less people that I need to fight it out with. And both me and this orange guy are immediately going to enter the pace line to keep the, keep the brakes momentum going to stay away from the field. Um, because the whole point of being in a breakaway in a race like this is to contest the sprints ahead of the main field. Um, but to do that, you need to do work and you need to be going as fast or faster than the field. Um, so we're going to go through some rotations. We're just going onto the hill now. Okay, so here we are in the final lap of the race. Uh, the breakaway group has stayed the same. It's still just me, Jillian, Jonathan, the guy in orange and the guy in black off the front. We haven't been caught. Um, spoiler alert, I took the regular sprint that happened three laps ago. I came first in that one. And now we're coming into the final sprint, which is worth double points. Um, in this last lap, the organization in the breakaway has kind of fallen apart at this point as you can see there isn't any pace line Jillian puts in a hard dig up on this hill and forces everyone to chase um, and basically I'm just gonna try to repeat what I did in the other sprints um, to get let out um, and, and try to take the win at this point uh, being in the break was a good move tactically because Previously, uh, if you remember, the guy that took the middle sprint, Craig, is not in this break. So he hasn't been contesting any of the points um, since the break went, which is good for me because Craig got the double point sprint win, which means that he was close to even with me on points for the day. But coming up into this break meant that I was contesting for points and he wasn't. So tactically that was a good choice and here uh, Jillian puts in another dig here to try to distance herself from our little group but I chase it down um, since she hadn't been uh, doing too well in the sprint she decided she needed to make an attack before the end but as soon as she sees that I'm on her wheel you can see her looking behind she's not gonna do any work she knows uh, just as well as anyone else that you don't want to be in the front uh, leading out for the sprint. So she just basically soft pedals here and pulls all the way over to the right so that I can't get a draft. Uh, if you remember before, I would always sit on the la on the right of the person in front to get a draft. So now I'm on the front. I do not want to be here. I don't want to lead out the sprint. So I pull all the way over to the right, hoping that someone else uh, comes on the inside of me. I'm still on the front. Everyone is on my wheel. I'm not even doing that much power, not, we're not going very quick. Uh, and then I move all the way over to the left and the orange guy goes and I start to open up my sprint, but I don't want to pull Jillian and Jonathan up, but then Jonathan goes and Jillian and I are fighting for his wheel. Uh, and then we both open up our sprints, but it's too late to take the win. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and please let me know what you think I could do better with these videos. This is my first one. Uh, if you want to let me know what you want to hear more about or something I should focus on, something you're interested in, please let me know. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.